It's going to be deja vu again for the Toronto Maple Leafs, and the Montreal Canadiens are headed to Winnipeg for the second round of the Stanley Cup playoffs. Am I supposed to be surprised? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I really am. What's going on, guys? Rob Beasel back with another breakdown. Now, ever since I was young enough to first pick up a hockey stick, I've been surrounded by Leaf fans. Geography will do that. I grew up just outside of Toronto. But every year in the playoffs, I find myself asking those friends the same question. Why? And that's exactly what I asked all of those friends right after their latest heartbreaking playoff exit. This team had a stranglehold on the Habs with a 3-1 series lead only to lose Game 7 on home ice. The Habs became just the second team to beat the Leafs in a Game 7 in Toronto since, you know, some guy who wore number 99 on his back helped the Kings do it back in 1993. So now we play the blame game because you can't play the what's next for this team game until we figure out whose fault it actually is. Well, I'm placing the blame exactly where it belongs. The players. You could argue whether or not this is a Stanley Cup caliber team, but what you can argue is that they should have had no problems with the Montreal Canadiens. And yes, that's even with Carey Price playing out of his mind. The problem is, the Leafs seem to treat this series like it was game 20 of the regular season. Where else do you see blind passes, spinoramas in overtime that end up with the puck in the back of the net? Also, your superstars need to take their game to another level. And Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner flat out didn't do that. And I'm not just talking about on the score sheet. Just watch guys like Sidney Crosby and Jonathan Taves and Alexander Ovechkin. When they made their playoff runs, they led their teams with all around games. The Leafs just didn't get that from their stars. I had a lot of nets that were empty that I just didn't put it into. So, um, like I said, I put a lot of pressure on myself to be the best player every single night. You know, I felt that uh, wasn't living up to me my own standards, and just gotta make sure that uh, stops happening. Um, I mean, there's not really much to be said. I think. Um... Thanks, Austin. So it's going to be the Habs and the Jets, two teams that shut down two superstars in round number one to get to where they are at this point. Okay, the Colorado Avalanche came into the playoffs as the odds-on favorite to win it all, and they are playing like it. They made quick work of the Blues in round number one and handled Vegas pretty easily in game one of that series. But we need to take a second here to really appreciate what Nathan McKinnon is doing because he's in another dimension right now. Wait, why does that sound so familiar? But we, we need to take a second, second here to really, to really appreciate, appreciate what, what Nathan, Nathan McKinnon, McKinnon is doing, doing because, because he's, he's in another, another dimension right now. <laughs> That's why, because he's doing it again in the playoffs. Oh, and by the way, he's making some history while doing it. He's played in 45 career playoff games, and he's put up 66 points. The only two players who had more points through their first 45 playoff games, not sure if you've heard of these guys, Wayne Gretzky and Mario Lemieux. McKinnon has played just five games in the playoffs and he already has eight goals and 12 points. He does things at full speed that not a lot of guys can do. Okay, one more thing before we get out of here. Remember when Nazem Kadri got suspended for that hit in the playoffs? No, 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 not that one. No, not that one either. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. He got an eight game suspension for that hit. Now he appealed it and it was upheld by Commissioner Gary Bettman. So what's next? Well, we're headed to a third party arbitrator. But I think the Avs can weather the storm until he gets back.